be to try to kind of mitigate some of these uh, threats, threats that we can't control. Um, we can locally reduce over overfishing and collection. We can locally address threats of habitat destruction, but we cannot locally address issues like climate change. We cannot locally address issues like poaching um, by you know, big fleets of ships from other countries. And so what we try to do is work on those big things. You know, we are always trying to solve climate change, but that's that's a big goal. That's kind of a, a long-term goal. So what are we going to do on the short term? Well, in the short term, we can try to preserve some of the giant clams and try to provide some kind of feedstocks to where they are going. Um, and we can kind of look at that here. And I just want to mention real quick for our programs, um, we work with the New Heaven Reef Conservation Program on Kotao and also the Department of Fisheries and the Department of Marine and Coastal Resources on this project. And the Department of Fisheries and Coastal and the Department of Coastal Resources, the DMCR, um, they were the ones who have been doing this for a long time. Um, a, a wonderful doctor there, Jin Nurengran, and she has started a giant clam hatchery oh, more than 20 years ago. And she's been providing giant clams to a lot of restocking programs that we were involved in. And we'll kind of go through those. So a big shout out to her. So how do these restocking programs work? Well, we utilize the, um, the reproductive cycle of the clams because it is a very R type select reproductive cycle. What I mean by that is they put out millions and millions of gametes hundreds of millions of gametes and have very, very little investment into those gametes. And it's kind of a rule of attrition as to which survives. So it's throwing out tons of genetic information, hoping something sticks. Unlike us where, you know, uh, us and elephants and other organisms like that will have very few offspring in their lives and they'll invest a lot of energy into ensuring that those offspring survive. So if we're getting hundreds of millions of offspring in a spawning, and only end up with a couple of individuals, that means that there's a very high rate of attrition. So if we can reduce that rate of attrition, then we can actually greatly increase the number of juveniles. So that's what we're gonna do. We're going to take some clams, some adults, and put them into a nursery. And then we're gonna trick them into spawning. So they do use environmental cues um, so we do have to do it at certain times of the year and with certain light levels and water temperatures and stuff like that. Um, but with the clams, they also have a, a chemical cue that they utilize, unlike the corals, if you joined our coral spawning talk. These ones, they'll have uh, chemosensory, so we can actually inject serotonin into the water and that'll trigger their spawning. So we'll get them to release their eggs and sperm on these little tr uh, trochophores and those will uh, go through the various stages of development to become the juvenile. As juveniles, then we can move out of the, 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 the aquarium, the flow through tanks, whatever we have, and we can actually move those out into the ocean. Um, it's much cheaper to grow them up out in the ocean because you don't need pumps and artificial lights and water changes and staff and all that. So we put them into cages, let them grow up um, to what we would call an escape site. So a size where they're no longer prone to, to many of the predators that would eat them. And then we can plant them out onto the reef where they can then join the reproducing population to seed other reefs. So this is the kind of idea that we've used um, with the larval um, rearing in, in giant clams. And this has been going on in Thailand, I want to say almost 30 years. Um, Jin, I think Dr. Jin, she's been part of it for like 25 years or so, if, if I'm not mistaken. And this was a project started um, and funded by the Queen of Thailand. Um, but it, I know similar programs also go on in other places throughout Southeast Asia, like Malaysia. Um, so, so there is some information on this, but not much. Um, so that's what we're trying to kind of spread. So what, why do we do this? Uh, we already kind of mentioned some of the problems and that we're trying to address. Um, so this is to increase the stock and the wild stock that we have in the area and areas where it's been depleted, create a, a reproducing population. Um, we can supply for the aquarium trade. So this completely eliminates any need 
to go and steal wild giant clams to then sell to the aquarium trade. Um, this allows us to just reproduce clams, grow them up and sell them to the aquarium trade like we would do with dogs or any other pets, you know. Um, it also provides biological specimens. So if we want to study giant clams, um, you know, for science and things like that, it means that we no longer have to go and remove them from the reef, um, which unfortunately was done a lot back with Gigas back, you know, 100, 200 years ago. Um, it also is another way that we can supply the food and souvenir trade. So it is, personally, I would rather that we were able to convince people not to eat them. Um, but if you look at like shark finning, you know, it's, it's an uphill battle to try to convince people not to eat something if they don't care about it. And what we see with giant clams is that it, it's kind of a fashionable thing like shark fins to eat it. Um, for example, on the island of Koh Tao in Thailand, when I arrived there in 2006, 2007, and you would talk to locals about eating giant clam, they would say, no, we don't do that you know, they got a whole long list of things they eat from the ocean, but not giant clams, you know, that the queen tells us not to eat them, or they're not good, they don't taste good. Those were the kind of things you would hear back, you know, 2006, 2007. And if we did say, well, someone's eating them, then they'd blame it on Koreans and Chinese people. Um, but by 2015, on that same island, then it became very fashionable for the elite to eat giant clams. It started, you know, people would travel and, and go to other islands and, and they would have in their restaurants giant clams. So it became fashionable for them to come back to this island and kind of show off, you know, their, their status by serving giant clam for food. Um, so we saw a bit of a shift in the demographics of who was eating them from mostly foreigners to the local people, unfortunately. So it's, an, it's a very uphill battle. So while we're fighting that battle, maybe we can use these nurseries to provide food and souvenir trade. We're not doing that personally, um, but just throwing it out there that if someone was going to be having a restaurant or something where they're serving giant clam, why does it need to be wild caught? It's very easy to grow them up. Well, thank you so much, and we hope that you enjoyed that video and found it informative. And just want to take a second to let you guys know that we are trying to start a uh, more professional YouTube channel here. It's a great way for our followers to get information and to get, receive education on their own time at their own convenience. It's also a great way for us to connect with our network, which is spread out all around the world. And lastly, it can also, if we do it right, be a way for us to make a little bit of side income to support the projects that we do underwater. So, if you know about YouTube, they do require that you have 1,000 subscribers before you can monetize your channel. So right now, we're really trying to reach that 1,000 subscriber mark. So it's really important for us, if you support what we're doing, if you support these videos, that you go ahead and give us a subscribe. This will help us get to a thousand followers and start to make um, money with this YouTube channel and then we can bring you much better content as well. Um, also go ahead and check out our Patreon if you haven't checked that out yet. We got a lot of great stuff going on over there and trying to create kind of an online mentorship program through that Patreon page. So thank you again and keep following and we appreciate you. Thanks so much for your support.